my name is Michael Phelps. I am the uh, Director of the Office of Budget for the United States Department of Commerce. The branch of service that I was affiliated with was the United States Air Force. Uh, I enlisted in, uh, sept on September 17, 1975. Yeah. And I would go on uh, to serve 33 years and I would retire uh, in January of 2011 as a colonel in the United States Air Force. Why did I join the Air Force is, is, is pretty interesting. Um, I think folks that know me uh, growing up and even some that uh, know a little bit about my past in the military, I'm always questioning things. And so after 12 years of school, I kind of timed out in, in terms of wanting to go to college, and but I didn't want to work in a factory in Cleveland, Ohio, like Ford or GM. And so uh, during our senior year, the recruiters came around, military recruiters came around, they had Armed Forces Day to take some tests. So I said, I'll, I'll take a test. And they came back to me and said, the Air Force guy came up and uh, uh, spoke to me and said, we have a deal for you. Uh, we can delay and list you. You have some good scores coming to the administrative field. And uh, the rest was kind of like lined up uh, to be history. That was something I wanted to do. Broke my heart of my parents because they wanted me to go to college. But one thing that I do admire about my two parents was that they were very supportive of their oldest son. And I promised them I would go back and get my degree. But this is just something I wanted to do at this time because of just having gone to school for 12 years, I have a sheet, two sheets of paper. We graduated from elementary school and then, uh, well, three, elementary, junior high, and then high school. And, and then the world said you have to go back and get another four-year degree. Again, if you knew me, I'm like, that just didn't add up, but uh, I knew I needed to do something different. So uh, the Air Force became an opportunity for me, and. Uh, I enlisted in 75, went back, got, uh, got my uh, degree in accounting, and got my commission in 82, and the rest is history. It was only supposed to be a four-year enlistment. <laughs> so in the, the actual career field was uh, financial management, and I think the interesting thing was as an enlisted uh, uh, member of the United States Air Force, I was an accounting uh, technician and did that for five years and then when I got into this commissioning program went back to college had a two-year break and then as a commission officer I got lucky to come back into the same career field as an officer that I did enlisted work so my first tour as a second lieutenant was an accounting and finance officer at Charleston Air Force Base and I just proceeded up through the rank and file of our career field of financial management to uh, assume one of 10 key positions in the United States Air Force as a uh, chief financial officer of a major command. I ended my career as the uh, chief financial officer of the combat air forces down at Langley Air Force Base, Virginia. I do not have direct military or combat related uh, service. However, I have supported several contingency operations to include the current fight that we're in right now. Uh, as a lieutenant, um, my first experience was the repatriation of students um, out of the island of Grenada when uh, folks went in and they were evacuated to Charleston Air Force Base and we teamed up with the Department of State to process those students coming back um, from that rescue operation. And so although uh, we were in a safe haven, it was just interesting calming those students down uh, as a military officer and just listening to what they experienced as the uh, Green Beret and U.S. military forces went in to rescue them. Next would be overseas when I was a uh, military war planner for our, or our finance career field when I was over in uh, Europe at uh, Ramstein Air Base, Germany, where we did military planning that led up to us executing our war plans for the first Gulf War. And so, although I did not go forward, 
I was in our command center in Europe at Ramstein Air Base uh, deploying uh, finance and uh, resource management people into that fight. And uh, I would later go over and escort one of our senior officers to a forward operating base on the Iraqi-Turkish border uh, to look at troops and uh, review things as they were going to, uh, uh, into operations into northern Iraq. And then I think the, the, most, the closest I got to actually uh, being in combat was here in the States. And, you know, um, I tell people about that the ability to walk out of the Pentagon on 9-11 uh, when it got hit. I can still, like where I was at that moment, where I was working on classified uh, SCIF in Air Force budget, and I still remember talking to colleagues when we were listening to, at that time, a low-flying plane, because they flew low, taking off a national airport. They flew low over the Pentagon, and so you're talking to this guy, so that plane sounds pretty low, and the next thing you know, you hear this rumbling sound, the Pentagon is shaking. Two colleagues that had um, an inner window, you heard this curse word, and what they actually saw, and they didn't know what was going on, was this fireball that had cleared the top of the building. And then the loudspeakers started going off, and Things just didn't seem right because, again, because we were in a skiff, no one knew what happened at the World Trade Center. And so we were told to evacuate. And I remember going out uh, into the first corridor and we would take our normal exit as we were supposed to get out of the building. And <clears throat> folks are talking to us about what was happening at the World Trade Center and didn't know this. So normally we would go out the second floor and we were directed down to the basement, so you knew something was wrong. And I remember talking to a guard as we were coming out. I said, what's going on? He says, look to the right as you clear the building. You just got hit by a plane. And so as I cleared the building and looked right, like he said, all I could see was a lot of black smoke coming out of the side. And you could hear the explosions, the secondary explosion of the fuel. And I think I looked up out of South Parking up to 395 and everything up there stopped. Nothing was moving, people were looking at us and this low flying helicopter was flying over the south parking lot area where I, so low that you could see the pilot on the right side. Um, and so, and that was kind of a harrowing day. And, but we would go back to work that next day. Uh, the building was still on fire, the roof was still on fire. We had instructions on how to get out if the, the fire couldn't be contained mainly because uh, the message was that your military was still operational. Although we got hit, we we're up and running. And, and so, um, but let it be shown for the record, we didn't work the full day because I think the smoke got to a lot of us. And so we got, I think we departed around 2.30. But that was an interesting day. I think the most memorable one for me was not so much at Langley Air Force Base, but when I was the budget director at Air Mobility Command. Um, our security forces folks were going forward into the combat zone and needed body armor. And we were trying to work a resourcing package to get them body armor. And I entered into a, uh, a funding transfer where we transferred and hopefully this thing came together where we were able to identify some resources to be transferred in order to get the right color of money so our guys could get body armor. Turned out to be better than I thought and we wound up getting the right body armor for those guys uh, going forward. You just think you're doing your job and not knowing how you're impacting the lives of people until you leave to go to Langley. And on behalf of the uh, almost 1,300 security forces folks in Air Mobility Command, I got this nice plaque with a bayonet and a, a plaque from them thanking me for what I had done for them. Uh, that is displayed in my study uh, because if you know the security forces, they generally do not give non-security forces folks those kinds of gifts. And so that was something special. And then they showed me a movie of uh, an incident in Iraq. 
um, where that body armor saved a life of a military person. They had, um, there was a combat operation where um, the person uh, getting out of the Humvee was getting ready to pursue uh, two uh, insurgents and took a hit right in his chest and it knocked him down. He was able to get back up and uh, capture not only the two people that shot at him, but also the, uh, the insurgent that was videotaping, videotaping that particular event. And the security forces guys say, hey, this is the stuff, this is the body armor that you got for our guys. So again, not direct combat, but you're, you're, you are influenced by the fact that some commander in the theater is not writing a letter home uh, to some parent uh, for the loss of their son or daughter over there. So, uh, my position here at Commerce is the director of the Office of Budget here at the Office of Secretary. And so, I overlook or oversee. The, the budget formulation and execution of our 12 bureaus that make up the Department of Commerce. Uh, I started here in March of 2011, was bought in to reorganize uh, the Office of Budget uh, based on some direction I received from the Acting Deputy Secretary at that time. I want to believe that I have fulfilled that particular request, although she is not here now. And, um, and so I've been here now for, for seven years as the, uh, as the budget director. How did my military experience uh, impact the current job? Well, your military experience is transferable. I think um, the immediate impact when I got here at Commerce was called out to me when people found, hey, this guy is pretty straightforward and direct. And in the military, you need to be straightforward and direct, clear, concise, and to the point. And because you don't want people dying or you want to make sure that people get commander's intent. They understand what's being said. And the most precious thing that people have is their time, is their time. You can, uh, you can pay people overtime for staying. Uh, you can apologize for this or that, but you can't replace anyone's time that you waste. And so I'm very sensitive to that. And the military it really hones you in on what's important. Tell people what's clear and concise, what you need them to do, and then we drive on. And, and that's what I think, if you talk to anybody at Commerce, they, they will tell you I'm pretty direct and, and open. Uh, and sometimes uh, doing what's right isn't popular, but uh, that's why I think they brought me in here to make sure uh, uh, we, we get a mission done. And it's not personal, it's very professional. And I think those that know me on a personal level uh, can set those aside. What does African American History Month mean to me? It is an opportunity for me, which I do every day, to try to convey uh, to African Americans and, and any person that I meet um, how blessed I, have, uh, I am to be fortunate if it's two minutes speaking to the janitor in the hallway, if it's 30 minutes speaking to the Secretary of Commerce uh, when we're briefing him, or someone just in passing, the security folks, is to be a role model for all the folks who have made this country great that I am now standing on their particular shoulders trying to be a mentor, a leader, a beacon of hope, uh, a lighthouse to guide people, you name it, in, in terms of, uh, that's kind of like, um, as I look at African American History Month, it's trying to be a good role model of a man of color 
uh, I'm not trying to get into a lot of the politics or anything like that, but um, I take that very seriously, um, especially coming out of the military and um, what I bring forward. You, know, you just never know any particular day when you come to work or going home whose life you might impact or change their perception of African Americans based on an encounter they have with me. And so I'm trying to keep the founding, the foundation, or my parents is, have instilled in me just to be a good son, a good role model, and reflect um, their upbringing of me.